I am a reviewer, so I review a lot of products. I'm not uh, beholden to any particular company, and uh, I consider myself sort of a magic hunter because I get a chance to start a lot of apps for a few minutes and seeing, trying to judge very quickly if they're worthy of being published, uh, review, you know, the time to go into review. So I see a lot of, I came up with this metaphor of dust or magic inspired by Bob Hughes' book of the same title. Um, it, it comes off a haiku. The haiku is, an idea can turn from dust to magic depending on the talent that rubs against it by Matsubashu. So I'm editor of Children's Technology Review and I'm not an illustrator. So I want to make that perfectly clear. So I want you to right away think about if you were to design an app and the topic is the human body. All right. So someone came to you and said, it's a nonfiction. I want you to create and illustrate and, and find a programmer and make an app about the human body. I want you to turn to the person next to you or the small group right away and just sort of sketch out what you what kind of product you would make. What are some what are some interesting ideas that you came up with? I wish we could do this all day, but <laughs> any anyone, what what was uh, how what was your approach? Yes. We have a, an app with three um, three matching that you can do with it, okay? Okay. Uh, one of them is uh, three inside the body, so you are in a camera, you can actually drive it. Nice. The second one is a, it's a mirror. Okay, so you're using the webcam and you're looking, uh, it would be a like Google Maps where you can look at the, yourself or the, or the physical or just a video strategy. So as you move it, you're actually seeing different parts of the world. Clever. Yeah. And, mm -hmm. <laughs> And the third one is it, it's a game, a disease game, isn't it? Yeah. Right. Yeah. 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 You have cancer yeah. or something. You can write diseases around the body, around the body. Oh, that's great. <laughs> <laughs> you don't have to know. It's all good. So now, this, this this is this let's move to the real world, okay? This, 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 okay. Dorling Kindersley made it an app. If you type human body into iTunes, you'll come up with the two leading ones. Um, and there's another company, a startup in Brooklyn called Tiny Bob. And uh, so it's clearly David Blyer. And so I'm um, first, let's have a look at, um, at these apps. So let's look at Dorling Kinder's lease. And it does the kind of thing that you'd expect. I think probably some of you are talking about this. I can go on in to a system. Right? And I can move around. That's cool. I can't really... Oh, okay, so here's the rear view. And I can pinch and pull, which is nice. It's a little bit, <coughs> little jerky, right? It's not elegant and smooth. But it's there. And, you know, so what else would I want to do? Ah, there's all the information that I could. Mm. <laughs> all right. A little bit. I can. It has reversibility. I can jump back and forth, and I can see close-ups. This is cool. It's definitely some cool things here. You can get a good close-up look at the eye. And. I, in any kind of nonfiction, I always look for, can I search the content? And how easy is it to find things? So I can jump right to a specific thing, and find it, and read about it, and so on. Not a bad app, right? Let's look at another approach. This is, this, this is Tiny Box. I'm not going to tell you which one I like, but I'd like you to tell me which one you like. Now, I heard about this app from Neil Hoskins. All right, so
else can I do here? That's the skeletal system. Showed you the eye in Dorland Kinders. Let's look at the eye in, in this one. <laughs> Giving it a little eye test. What do you think a child would do if there was an eye in the screen? <laughs> Poke it. <laughs> say, honey, I wanted you to know that you have blue eyes because your grandmother has blue eyes. So then I touch the dot. Honey, I wanted you to know that you have blue eyes because your grandmother has blue eyes. And then these dots are notes yeah, so from other times when I've shown this app. <laughs> <laughs> Another thing that every child is going to quickly do, and we might as well just do it, <laughs> is go right for the poop. <laughs> <laughs> I used to be a teacher. <laughs> Because Apple has featured it, and the people at Apple like it, and it's a, it's 
in the top this 10 selling good. apps. And this is how good of he, His inspiration came from his children. And they would have, in the evening, he'd ask his kids, what do you want to know about? And they would say, well, I want to know what happens and how your heart works. And so he decided to try to make an app that explained it. So starting with the child is where that came from. Dorling Kindersley started with a textbook. And we have to, we have to fill that. You know, it's like fill in a spreadsheet. And I was up in previously, I was up in a CD ROM as well. But... Dorling Kindersley has made beautiful work in the past. Beautiful. And I'd be the first to vouch for it. But I'm also confident that it won't be used very much, or it'll be used as a reference. And, you know, it's, I, I, at the end of the day, I don't think you can compare the two. But I think that, um, what I'm, main thing is, I want you guys to understand that this is a whole different set of rules. So we have to start with some definitions. So, this is where it gets really tricky, because what is a story? Stories can be fiction, they can be non-fiction, they can be Pokemon, they can be, if you look at um, Harry Potter, you know, you can see all sorts of different stories and sub-stories, and that's very thick, non-fiction. Um, stories can be short, they can be long. What is digital? Is it linear or non-linear? And how, what is a child? That's a huge variable, because children who are toddlers or babies our preschoolers are very different than children who are in kindergarten and early elementary, who are very different than older children. So you have to be very tuned in to all of these things. And then the screen thing is this is a screen and this is a screen. So everything is a whole different psychology here. What I'm trying to tell you is that this is not easy. And if you don't know what you're doing, you'll get steamrolled. Um, it, because um, there's a lot of people who don't know what they're doing. Now, another way to look at this that I use is I try to understand different theories because the constants, if you're trying to figure out something that's real messy, you start to bank on constants, you know, the things that you know. Children develop the same 100 today as they did 100 years ago. They go through very similar stages. They basically crawl and then they walk and so on. They develop language in a very predictable way. And we know a lot about that. And we also know that uh, Moore's Law is driving technology forward. And there will always be change. But we are pretty confident that this is the format that will be around probably from now on. Some sort of a tablet or a device like this with a multi-touch screen. And it has the ability to download content quickly. And this is only two years old, two and a half years old. And so start to, let's start by understanding this thing, okay? Because this is really one of the constants. But I have three very different psychologists here, two constructivists who believe that children learn through experience, and one behaviorist, B.F. Skinner, who believes that children need to be molded and shaped and so on. Each would have very different opinions about how to use this and how to develop that human anatomy app. B.F. Skinner would probably have a test. And when, after you master the knowledge and give you a test, and then you can advance. Um, PHA and Montessori would have liked the, um, the, the tiny bop approach, where you can just explore. Which is correct? Both. And that's the point. So, one takeaway number one is understand your own philosophy and be true to it. And defend it. If a critic, such as myself, says it's a bad act, Say, hey, that's your opinion. Other people think it, it's, it's a good app. You start to understand the app category by narrowing in. One of the things that's good is, let's look at how each app treats the heart. And if you know something about the heart, if you happen to be a cardiologist, all the better, because then you can see if it's accurate or not. But I would suggest going in and type the three little pigs and download 10 of them. Free ones, paid ones, invest a few dollars in this because the better ones cost $2 or $3, and put them on a line from like to don't like. And you'll start to create a, a, a lens in your own mind about approaches to a common folk story, and you start to get smart and see how those things are handled. 
And you need to build up your own skills in this space. It isn't going to happen overnight. It's only going to be happened by the number of minutes that your finger is touching the screen. The other thing that I would want to leave here in Dublin is that multi-touch has huge untapped potential. We're at the very beginning. It's only been around for a few years. And so it is really a time where a few people can make a lot of money if they understand how to use the magic. Let's start with the affordances and let's get into what exactly is so exciting about this. I've identified 10 of these. 10 things. I call them the 10 pillars of the tablet. One is the multi-touch. 11 simultaneous touches. This has huge implications for young children. That's why they like it so much. It also works very well with cats. Because <laughs> they can touch and swipe and they instantly get feedback. So it's very high in control. And once you start figuring out that you can like bubble wrap, you can touch it, pop it, it's very seductive. And you go, oh, I can do this. I like this. And that is really the, the main power. Children think like this, they swipe. This whole approach, while it may not have been developed for children, is the perfect storm for, um, for children. Um, ten hour batteries, it can last all day. That was a huge advance that no one talks about. But um, how many times have you reached for a toy or something and the batteries are dead? It doesn't happen so much anymore. Um, the internet, I mean, enough said. You, you can put Google Maps on here and you can give a child the, the best atlas in the world. The whole world of knowledge is at your child's fingertip. I almost think that it's child abuse not to give, give every child this. Why wouldn't you give them the answer to every possible question in the form of a search engine? Google Images. If they find a bug that they don't know what it is, they can type it into a search engine at a very young age and they can find this is pure, powerful knowledge. So, we are living in a time of revolution. It has really wonderful sound, stereo sound. So you can put Beethoven's Ninth Symphony on here, and a child who's very, just the very beginning of their, let's say they're, they're a young Mozart, and they don't know it. How many children are, have the genetic potential of being a great composer, but they've never had exposure, they've never been to the symphonies, they've never had tutors, they can't afford music lessons. Now we can start to give them the experiences that can fill in the gap. It has cameras, and the way that you guys implement it is very smart, because people forget there's a front and a back camera on this, and it's pretty good. And you can make that an x-ray, you can make it um, you know, all kinds of things. Um, and it's pretty, all things considered, if you remember spending $2,000 on a laptop 10 years ago, the, the, these are now $150 to $500. The Android tablets, there's one just coming out in the States for $100. And they, the catch is they want to sell you bundled software with it. There are 200 apps. And then they, they don't give you access to the mainstream app stores. So the hardware is really becoming almost an afterthought. It's the software sales of music and movies that's, these are commercial pipelines. So it's a really interesting time to be a publisher, and this is the good news. If you are a source of ideas, content is king. It always will be king, and there's more ways to reach children with your ideas. The trick is you have to figure out the nuances of these pipelines. The other constant is supply and demand. The people who understand how the iTunes model works are making a lot of money. Toka Boca is one. They understand that it's bite-sized, it's not novel-sized. You offer a lot of really good things for 99 cents or just one bite, and you build trust so that your child is very engaged and they, they keep coming back. And how many downloads did Tokoboka just surpass? 50 million. 50 million. So 50 million at 99 cents each. That's, that's a lot of money. And that's just on my advice. Yeah. The question now is, what can I turn this into? That's your new question. All right? So I think it's very 
you know, your advantage is you understand illustration. But your disadvantage is if you approach it with a 19th century model, you're headed for a train wreck. A lot of time, and I'm telling you this because I, am, I, I look at a lot of products. And another thing is, is watch children. The children, if you watch how they play with these, that, that has inspired more good apps and more good practice. Uh, they'll run right away or they'll hit the home button if they don't like it. <laughs> That's what it's about right there. Now, I want to give you some feedback right from the, the jurors, okay? Now, I coordinate the jurors for this uh, contest. Bologna Regazzi Digital Prize, it, um, one illustrator and three other jurors are going to meet, and we look at, uh, we discuss hundreds of apps. And it's kind of like with the book prize where we lay them out on the table. We can't do that and we'll only put them up on a projector. We try to narrow, uh, last year there were 242 entries from 32 countries. And we try to narrow it down to the top 20 and then top 10. Six products were, were selected from that. Any publisher, any country, no fees, any platform, although most are coming in on Apple. These are the things that came from the jurors' comments um, when we were looking at an app or an ebook pro product. We, we would, these are things that were actually said. Clumsy, not responsive. Like we would have knocked it because when you zoomed in on that, um, bo that body on, on the Dorling Kindersley, um, one of the things I did is I swiped. I wanted to see the body spin. The Dorling Kindersley approach is they put a, a rotate icon off to the right, so they made it a step removed. That doesn't work. Um, I highlighted three of them. Evil, Sprinkle, and Page Flipper. Now, evil is more present than you think. And it has to do with all of the shady practices of getting a child to click like this on Facebook, or getting a child to make an in-app sale, or just showing advertising, or just promoting old-fashioned self-promotion. Did you like this app? I made some more. You have to understand that a child's space is sacred. It should be for editorial and for informing, not for selling. Number two, sprinkle. Sprinkle is where you take a book or a project and you just sprinkle animated things in there as if it's cool. And sometimes it does add to it, but other times it's just like frosting and it doesn't really help or work with the narrative. So we were looking for narrative driven or narrative supported. The word narrative came up a lot. This is a new way to tell stories. We want the interactivity to drive the story, not work against it or distract from it. And then the third one is the page flipper. We would have called the Dorling Kindersley another page flipper because it's the old model brought to the glass screen. We're looking for interactive things like scrolling up and down, zooming in and out, things that are, you know, you're, we're not limited to the page anymore. Why bring that whole metaphor in? Now there, again, there are some pretty good page flippers, say from story toys. Um, that's a page flipper, but the whole book flips and you can go inside the book. So it's really clever. I also wrote an article, and it's at dustermagic.com ebooks, where it says um, how not to make an ebook. The jurors, um, Andre Lietra um, from Portugal, um, Cristina Mussinelli from Italy, and Chris Mee from the UK, we wanted to make it really clear. You know, if we're going to be jurors or we're going to be part of this contest, we want it to be transparent. We're going to tell you what we found. I mean, that we're learning as much as everybody else. So we want to do this award to help, help the field along. So the magic, the stuff that we liked, were any time you put something on the screen, like a balloon, right? There's a lot of times you see balloons and things. It better pop. All right? I'm just telling you. If you don't, if you put something interesting and it doesn't do anything, what happens is it's dead. And a child hits it and it's like, boom. And they say, oh. it's, it's a very small little psych psychological thing. It happens in instantaneous little bits of seconds, but their engagement drops. So the best design starts from the ground up. 
It starts around the interactivity, and it builds up on that. The principle of accidental success is very important. There are multiple ways to do things. Why make it just swipe to turn a page? What if you just tapped on something? Or what if you lean the device? So there's multiple ways to do the same thing. You never know when there's a child with special needs who might have some sort of motor issues and you, you're giving them more hooks. Same with languages. You can have multiple translations. Or you can eliminate language altogether. Audio is very important. Remember in the human body from Tiny Bot, you could hear the blood gurgling? There were other sounds too, which I care not to re recall. But um, that's really important. It tells you that the, the thing is alive. Mark Schlichting says, good audio makes poor graphics look better. Don't believe me? Have you ever seen something called Pokemon? I wish I had one millionth of their money. How about this one? This is just big, giant, pixelated blocks. You ever heard of Minecraft? <laughs> I wish I had that one. One word to take away is crisp, like a potato chip breaking. That should happen the second you touch the screen, because that little makes it feel, oh, it's alive. It hurt me. I'm going to show you another one. Start at the very beginning. Within five seconds, I have to have success. So I'm counting. All right, what do I do now? It's got the ambient noise. See how that thing seems... What, what's it doing? Is it dead or is it alive? It's alive. It's pulsing like a heart, like a hunting dog waiting to pounce. That's what an interface needs to do from the very start. This is why they're making a lot of money. So what do I do? Did you hear it? Now a lot of apps start with the dog and pony show. Oh, I'm here, it's great, everything's happy. Ah, you're a kid, I'm an adult, I'm gonna entertain you. The kids hit the home button very quickly. This is the beginning of a concert. What is the beginning of a concert like? Absolute silence, because I make the first move. That's really scary as a designer. You don't push a thing. So this is this is the sign of really good work. La, 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 la. It needs to be able to do that. So I may not know what to do. There's nobody that said, hey, guess what you do now, kids? First, make a concert. You can make a concert. You know, none of that. mechanisms like steering wheels. They don't do anything, but the kids are there. They give the children the feeling of control. Here's some examples of, of the dust. Okay. What do you think of this interface? <laughs> now this is an early reading program. <laughs> some of these come from very established and reputable um, publishers like Sesame Street. Um, this is Warner Brothers. These guys have huge budgets. But you're supposed to sort and put the match, right? Look at all of the clutter. You don't throw a 2D thing on a 2D screen. I mean, kids will figure it out, but it diminishes the chance that they will or they'll find, they'll find something else. What I basically did was I um, went through, I looked at all the low ratings, and I just pulled out the screenshots. There's a lot of font abuse going on. <laughs> just really, really sloppy work. Um, overlaying things, just laying the, the, the copy over the duck, and just, you know, it's just sloppy. Here's the other big, huge variable. This has to work on a, on a small screen, too. 
So if you've got a font that looks like that on an iPad, you're really out of luck if you're going to an iPad mini or if you go to a, an iPhone or an iPod touch. It's, there's no chance of it working. So there's lots of this practice. The whole art of page turning is, now a lot of this comes from template-based approaches where a publisher will take their book to uh, a house that says, we'll make, your, we'll make an ebook for you. And they don't, there's no real communication. The best storytelling it happens when the actual authors and designers are the programmers. Here's another thing that happened. Apple and, and, and Google are continually upgrading their system. You would not publish a book if you knew that paper was going to change and ink was going to change and all of a sudden someone open up and can't see the words anymore. You have to have control of the content. And there's a lot of bugs that happen. This is um, The Very Hungry Caterpillar of Eric Carle. They took a Cherish illustration and made a completely horrible act. Have a look at it, download it, see if you agree. But it's as important to know what not to do as to know what to do. And that's, that's clearly an example. Again, all of those details are in the handout packet, so you can um, get started on this. How about that beautiful illustration? <laughs> A lot of times it's just really busy, and it isn't so bad, but it's just um, developmentally not right. There's a lot of royalty free content out there. Um, what's wrong with this instantly? Can someone call it out? Why it would just be instantly eliminated? All the Facebook advertisements. Right. It's evil. <laughs> At the end of the day, it's designed by somebody who's trying to lure children in using a theme like Snow White and get them to like their Facebook. Just more bad fonts. That's, that's just inexcusable. It's unprofessional and... Can I use the word garish? <laughs> it's garish. There's a lot of media work, and the, the excellent work gets the prize. This is just nasty. <laughs> and those balloons don't pop, by the way. <laughs> this is for babies. This is marketed to babies. It's called Baby's First Puzzle Farm Light. <laughs> that doesn't scare you away. But you know what? People are downloading it like crazy. There is a lot of this. So let's look at some magic. So War Horse won the nonfiction prize. And I think we should have a look at a look at a touch press. So touch press is, is based in the UK. Let's look at it. It's $14 and it's 1.9 gigabytes. This is like a regular book. War Horse is World War One. And the, the reason that Jurors liked it was that you can go in and touch stuff, and it's arranged like a regular book. But the illustrations do what you'd expect them to do. So you can zoom in and take a close look at things. If you want. That's cool, but check this out. Now it has like the Kindle-like things. You can adjust brightness and reading if you just want to read it. This is where it gets really interesting. Now, I'm not online and I should be. And I apologize for that. It's a historical novel. And it has the real documents. It's not watered down. And it has footage. I can easily get out of what I get into, and then I can take a good close look at things. This soldier was having a bad day. There's links to a Google map. I just have a good time looking at this stuff. And it, you always discover things. Um, and so that you can see that a battlefield is now a parking lot for a mall. So it relates it to the real world using online stuff. So 
The other thing that they've done here is they have a live performance by the author. Wait on the other side, there'll be peace, there'll be plenty. See the So this is the author reading the book. Soon Top Thorn developed a, a terrible cough that shook his whole massive frame. Many of the other horses went off. Every element is good quality. And that's the the key to these things is that um, I have the music to the policy. The key to making product <laughs> is to make sure every part of it is quality. Not one part <laughs> is weak. This story was written ages and ages ago <laughs> by a blind man. This is what a blind man would see. His eyes couldn't see. So what happens? What would a child do? His mind has full ideas. of images. So and we can happens. still hear his voice now. So it's previewing the book of the story of Ulysses. In a very ancient time, Anyone want to the gods still come down to earth. Yeah. Go ahead, give it a try. Once you start touching it, you don't so want to stop. You know why? It's almost impossible to remember when. <laughs> <laughs> the terrifying war broke out. Every time you touch an arrow, it's shooting down at you. There was a battle. And it makes you just want to keep doing it, doesn't it? See? I took a normally civilized man. I took a normally civilized man. And then, by the way, uh, behind you know, I can lean and tilt months so months the arrows know where I'm going. So it's just another little way of making you feel powerful and in control. Until one day, Ulysses had an idea. So a couple other interesting techniques. I can control the Trojan horse. I bring out the soldiers. It just doesn't throw it. I control it. I drive the story with multiple taps. In this case, I lean left and right to navigate the seas. Other good examples that are in the slide deck, Red Riding Hood by uh, Nosy Crow is just beautifully done. It has some touches such as you come upon a clearing and there's a pond of water. And you look very carefully and you see something familiar in the water glistening back at you. It's your face. It's as if you're looking at the reflection. And that's another really clever use of the camera. ABC Peapod Labs, um, I'll just show you one here. They use, this is all based on royalty free. Do you guys want music? Or do you want farms? Or do you want food? Food. Food? All right. So uh, this will make you hungry. This is all based on. Little Explorers ABC Food. This is, what's this? <laughs> what's that doing in there? 
Do you remember these? Isn't it great to be alive right now and just stand from this to that? Here, I'll hold them together. See if they explode. I mean, this is, it's phenomenal that we live in, in times when, you know, we actually use floppy disks. By the way, for anyone under 30, this is called a floppy disk. They don't touch right there. This is, you know, you can come and see it. Maybe some older person will explain how they work. Monster socks, phenomenal. The, the winner was Four Little Corners. Let's get smart on all of them. Try them. It's worth it. The Ocean House Media they uses type, uh, text scaffolding. If you touch any of these objects, like a machine gun, you go, Ch -ch -ch. it says water, 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 and the word flies out. If it said yellow, the word would fly out of the word. The animated would fly out of it and land right on top of it. So it's a really great scaffold. And I'm an educator too, and as are a lot of people who you know, are looking for things where the child walks away with something that they didn't have when they started the experience. So that it's something you value. And if it's learning to read, that's a good thing. Toka Boca is one of the masters of this space. So definitely download Toka Hair Salon and just try to understand how they've taken it. basics of illustrations and they're just surpassed 50 million apps, <coughs> downloads. One of the better um, story approaches that actually is a page flipper is Monster at the end of this book. And it's really done well because the reason is you're not supposed to turn the page. It says, don't turn the page, it tells you. It gives you a lecture. And, you know, there's like nails and a, there's a dang fault and everything else. And it's just a really fun thing of what happens when you turn the page because there's a monster behind that page and it's going to get you and the monster of course is the cookie monster. Disney Animated is uh, another phenomenal um, thing. Closing thoughts, be true to your philosophy, understand that we're living in amazing times. Some of you can become incredibly wealthy and if any of you do, please remember David um, so that we can get a good decent hotel room. <laughs> And understand the affordances of what this is and ride them. They're, they're the new horse to ride. You are no longer illustrators. I hereby bless you if you come and dip your finger in some of this limoncello. You are then now your illustrator psychologists. That's what you need to be if you're going to get into this space. If you don't want to become this, just don't do it. It's better not to even go into the space than to go in and create something that's, as we say, lame, <laughs> or just clunky, or just, it, it doesn't work. Remember the 10 pillars, ask the basic question, what can I turn this, and I turned your finger into an arrow launcher. And then Mark Goodchild, I met him at Cine Kid lab two weeks ago, and he said, if Alfred Hitchcock were alive today, He'd probably be thinking about how to use a tablet to tell suspense stories. <laughs> <laughs> so I like to say thank you. <laughs> That's a pretty good sheet. <laughs> thank you. Do you have any time for questions? Any questions? Yes, I will, I'll, I'll turn it over. Yes. Three questions? Yes. Yeah. So I just ask one question. As an illustrator, I'm going to be interested in that. Um, I'm just confused as to how I proceed with it. Like, for instance, if I, if I wanted to come up with a, 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 an interactive um, uh, app that, let's say, you have different animals and you press the animals and you roll back, okay? I can illustrate that. But how do I then take that from um, this sketch and this to something that's actually and uh, roars back at me, um, because they don't know how to do it. Um, and I'm not sure you can answer that, but maybe somebody else can, I don't know. Well, the, um, the Four Little Corners people, the Dada Media and Play Tales, this is their third app, and they originally tried to re-engineer uh, existing books to make them interactive. And they failed. I mean, they, they you know, a couple hundred downloads. Really cool. They decided to start from scratch with just geometric shapes. And remember what Mark Schlichting says about sound makes 
core graphics look good. Little squares playing with so screen. you could probably handle this kind of programming. So start minimal and make it highly interactive, and that's what they did. This thing won the prize because it's just such a playful idea about a square that doesn't fit in with his friends. This narrative is so strong, it's so appealing. And you actually help the shapes get in. So start with what you can do and learn the tools. Uh, and I have the bad news is you have to start learning how to do programming and kind of how that all fits. And it's not fun when you're in the middle of a career or, you know, like me. I just don't have the batteries. <laughs> but you have to, and it's a reality. You know, I, I wouldn't be doing any favors by telling you, we live in a different time. This is the medium, this is, this is how children and adults are getting their information. If you want to be in the business, you have to play by these rules. Sorry, can I just say, um, there's a program called Scratch, and my 10 year old, well it's 9, but he's just 10, and he's learning how to use Scratch at the moment, and it's basically how to make apps. Yeah, um, so, sort of, yeah, it's, it's a... Scratch.ie. Right. Kind of give you an idea of what yeah. it's about. Yeah. yeah, Scratch is great. It's a programming from MIT. Just type Scratch into Google and you can download yeah. it. It runs on, but it's not clap, it's not tablet based, it's PC based, so. Yeah. Okay. Uh, and Warren, um, I saw you speak at Bologna, that's why I was so impressed with you there. I didn't meet you there, but that's why I wanted you to come today. But I had never been to Bologna before, and then I was struck that all of the publishers were there, and then there was this small digital section, and only maybe one or two people doing good stuff. So I came back from away from it kind of saying, really, like what you're saying here, the creatives have to drive it. Like, so the illustrators will come up, where are the people who will make it? You know, make the future along with kind of the little kids doing it. But the content is there's not very much good content there. But like Roger was saying, you know, how do we afford the next step? So how did the creators like us make the, the really good apps? And I suppose publishers aren't even doing it, you know, because I can see what all of the publishers there at Colonia, maybe a few of them are sticking their finger into it, you know, just to, to see it. But I talked to Kate from no Nosy Crow, and they're investing hugely in the programming of it. And so a normal illustrator won't have that back up, but, you know, it's interesting. It's almost like if you've got the creative thing, maybe if we match up with the guys who can write the programming, that might be the way to Yeah, it. if you can get a genius programmer in-house, that's what TouchPress does. Yeah, yeah, they yeah. have some really brilliant programmers, and they work around the, the pro they work with them. So, um, I think, last question. I, I don't want to hijack your <laughs> 10 minutes. <laughs> In terms of pricing, the drive is everywhere else in the app store is for us free. Do you think it's going in the opposite direction for kids? Apps? Yeah, I think that um, the the trust is the is the currency right now. It's the companies that have gotten to a point where the parents trust them that they can sell. What they'll do the the trick is sell it for the price is dollar ninety nine, and then they have a half price special for ninety nine cents, but they raise it back. Um, and there's absolutely no advertising and no gimmicks, and the kids are in love with it. If you can, if you can get that, then you can start. Um, you, then you might have a business if you can get five to ten apps, and you have a series and plans in place. It's a very tough business. I mean, I wouldn't. I, I know many people who are lost a lot of money. The Sunday before uh, Bologna Fair, the fair starts on Monday, there's going to be a master class. And uh, I am coordinating it uh, as part of, with Neil Hoskins, who uh, coordinates the uh, digital cafe. And so what we're going to do is we have one designer from Touch Press, and uh, who's going to do an hour lecture, talk about how they make their products, and then the other one is uh, Kate Wilson of Nosy Crow is going to talk about how she does apps. The speakers are selected from the winners from the Bologna Regazzi Prize. It's basically, okay, you guys did it. You know, you're the best. Um, how do you do it? And it's called the, the Duster Magic Master Class at Bologna. So uh, I'm really looking forward to it. Thank you, David. I try not to self promote. So. <laughs> that would be, that's evil. <laughs> I have two daughters in college, so. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you.
again, thank you for having me. I